our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE Conversation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, your host of the CUBE. We are here, Arpit Joshua Pura, GM of Networking Edge IoT for the Linux Foundation. Arpit, great to see you again. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Thank you, happy to so, be here. So, um, obviously, we love the Linux Foundation. We've been following all the events. We've chatted in the past about networking. Compute storage and networking just doesn't seem to go away with cloud and on-premise hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, but open source software continues to surpass expectations, growth, geographies outside the United States and North America, just overall, just greatness in software. Everything's an abstraction layer now. You've got Kubernetes, cloud native, so many good things going on with software. So congratulations. Well, thank you. No, I think we're excited too. So you guys got a big event coming up uh, in China, OSS, Open Source Summit, plus KubeCon. Yeah. A lot of exciting things. I want to talk about that in a second, but I want to get your take on a couple key things. Um, IoT, uh, Edge, Edge and IoT, deep learning and AI and networking. I want to kind of drill down with you. Tell us what's, what's the, what's the updates on the projects around Linux Foundation. Okay. The exciting ones. I mean, we know cloud native CNCF is on a tear, more logos, more members, keeps growing. Yep. Cloud natives clearly has a lot of opportunity, but the classic and the stack, certainly network computing storage is still kicking butt. Yeah, so let me start off by uh, Edge. And uh, the fundamental uh, uh, assumption here is that what happened in the cloud and core is going to move to the edge. And it's going to be 50, 100, 200 times larger in terms of opportunity, uh, applications, uh, spending, et cetera. And so what LF did was we announced a very exciting project called uh, Linux Foundation Edge as an umbrella earlier in January. And it was announced with over 60 founding members, right? It's the largest uh, founding member announcements we have had uh, in quite some time. Uh, and the reason for that is very simple. The project aims at unifying the fragmented edge and IoT market. So today, edge is completely fragmented. If you talk to clouds, they have a view of edge, right? Azure, Amazon, I, uh, you know, Baidu, Tencent, you name it. If you talk to the enterprise, they have a view of what edge needs to be. If you talk to the telcos, they're bringing the telecom stack close to the edge. And then if you talk to the IoT vendors, they have a perception of edge. So each of them are solving the edge problems this differently. Mm -hmm. What LF Edge is doing is it is unifying a framework and set of frameworks that allow you to uh, create a common, common lifecycle management uh, framework for edge compute, right? Mm -hmm. Now the best part of it is it's built on, uh, you know, five exciting technologies. So people ask, you know, why now? So there are five technologies that are converging at the same time. 5G, low latency, um, net NFV, network function virtualization, so on demand, mm -hmm. AI, right? So predictive analytics for machine learning, um, uh, container and uh, microservices app development, so you can really write apps really fast, and then hardware development, TPU, GPU, NPU, lots of exciting different sides and shapes. All five converging, put it close to the apps, and you have a whole new market. The, I mean, this is, first of all, complicated in the sense of, and, and, and cluttered, fragmented, shifting grounds, so it's an opportunity. It's an so opportunity. I get that, fragmented. You got, you got the clouds, you got the enterprises, and you got the telcos all kind of doing their own thing. Yep. Multiple technologies exploding, 5G, Wi-Fi 6, a bunch of other things mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you laid out all happening. But also, you have all those suppliers, yes. right? And so you have different manufacturers. At different layers. Different, so, so it's another, so it's very, multiple dimensions to the Correct. complexity. Correct. What are you guys seeing in terms of, as a solution, what are, what's motivating the founding members when you, meet, when you say unifying? Mm -hmm. What specifically does that mean? What that means is the, the entire ecosystem from those markets are coming together to solve common problems. And I always sort of joke around, but it's true. The common problems are really the plumbing, right? It's the common life cycle management. How do you start, stop, boot, load, log, you know, things like that. Uh, how do you abstract? Now in the edge, you got 400, 500 interfaces 
that comes into an IoT or an edge device, you know, Zigbee, Bluetooth, uh, you know, you've got protocols like MQTT, you know, things that are legacy and new, right? Then you have connectivity to the clouds, uh, devices of various forms and shapes. So there's a lot of end by end problems as we call it. So the cloud players, so for LF Edge, for example, Tencent and Baidu and, you know, the, the, the cloud uh, leaders are coming together and say, let's solve it once. Uh, the industrial IoT player, like you know, Dynamic, OSI Soft, they're coming in saying, let's solve it once. Mm -hmm. um, the telcos, AT&T, NTT, they're saying, let's solve it once, right? And let's solve this problem in open source because we all don't need to do it and we'll differentiate on top. So, and then of course, the classic system vendors that support these markets are all joining hands. And then talk about the business pressure real quick. I know, obviously, you look at say, Alibaba, for instance, and, and the folks you mentioned, Tencent in China, they're perfecting the edge. You've got videos, the edge, all kinds of edge devices, Correct. people. So there's business pressures as well. The business pressure is very simple. Uh, the innovation has to speed up. Uh, the cost has to go down. And new apps are coming up, so extra revenue, right? So because of these five technologies I mentioned, you got, you know, uh, the top killer apps in Edge are anything that is kind of video, but not YouTube, right? right? So anything that the video comes from 360 venues yeah. or drones, things like that, uh, plus anything that moves, but that's not a phone, right. right? So things like connected cars, vehicles, right? All of those are Edge applications. So in LF Edge, we are defining Edge as an application that requires yeah. 20 milliseconds or less latency. I can't wait for someone to define software-defined edge, or it probably is defined. Uh, a great example, I interviewed um, an R&D engineer at VMware uh, yesterday in San Francisco, it was at the radio event, and we were just riffing on 5G, and talking about software at the edge, and one of the advances yes. that's coming is splicing the frequency, so that you could put software in the radios at the, at the antenna, so you yeah. could essentially provision. Correct, and time. that's a telco use case, right? So yeah. our projects at the LF Edge, right, are uh, EdgeX Foundry, um, Acreno, Edge Virtualization Engine, um, Open Glossary, Home Edge, right? There's five and growing. And all of these software projects can allow you to put ed uh, Edge blueprints. And blueprints are really reference solutions yeah. for smart cities, uh, manufacturing, uh, telcos, um, you know, industrial gateways, et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to be a fertile of, ground for entrepreneurship too, if you think correct. about it. Correct, startups are you huge. Know, th just the radio um, software that spices the radio spectrum is going to essentially maybe enable a service provider market in the towers, if correct. I own my own land. Correct. I can own the tower and rent it out, one radio. Yep. So business model innovation is also an it's opportunity, a huge not just the business correct. pressure to have an edge, but. So technology, business, and market pressures, all three are colliding. Yeah, perfect Beautiful. storm. So edge, edge is very exciting for us. And you know, we had some new announcements yeah. come out uh, in, in you know, May and, and more exciting news to come out in June as well. And so go back into Lens Foundation. So, um, so if, I, if I want to learn more. LFEdge.org. That's kind of the CNCF of edge, if you will, right? Kind yeah, of it's an umbrella with all the projects and that's equivalent to the CNCF, yeah. right? And and of course it's it's So a it's got momentum, growth. 64 huge founding momentum. members. How yeah, now we are at 70 founding members and, and growing. And how long has it been around? It's, uh, it's uh, the umbrella has been around for about five months. Uh, some of the projects have been around for a couple of years as they incubate. Right. Well, let us know when the events start kicking in. We'll get the cube yeah. down there yeah. to cover it. Absolutely. Super exciting, again, again multiple dimensions innovation. All right, next topic, one of my favorites is uh, AI and deep learning. Uh, AI is great, if you don't have data, you can't really make AI work. Deep learning requires data, so this is a data conversation. What's going on in the Linux Foundation around AI and deep learning? Yeah, so we have a foundation called LF Deep Learning, as you know. Um, it was launched last year, and since then, we have significantly uh, moved it forward uh, by adding more members, and obviously the key here is adding more projects, right? So our goal in the LF Deep Learning Foundation is to bring the community of data scientists, uh, researchers, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, academia, and end users to collaborate and create frameworks and platforms that don't require uh, you know, a PhD to use. So a lot it's of data ingestion, managing data, so not a lot of coding, more data analyst, uh, applications. It's, it's more, I would say, platforms for use, right? So yeah. frameworks that you can actually use to get business outcomes, 
right? So projects include, you know, Acumos, which is uh, a machine learning framework that allows you, uh, and a marketplace, which allows you to sort of uh, use a lot of uh, uh, use cases that can be commonly uh, put. And, it, and, and this is across all verticals, but I'll give you a telecom example. Um, you know, for example, there's a, the use, a use case which is, you know, drones inspecting base stations yeah. and doing analytics for uh, maintenance, right? That can be fed into a marketplace used yeah. by other operators worldwide. You don't have to repeat that and you don't need to understand the details of uh, machine learning algorithms, right? So so we yeah. are trying to do that. There are projects that have been contributed from, from, from Tencent, Baidu, Uber, et cetera, you know, Angel, Elastic Deep Learning, uh, Pyro, you know, the, the it, yeah. It's 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 a huge, uh, huge investment. And everybody us. wins when there's contribution because data is one of those things where if there's available, it just gets Correct. smarter. And, and and you know so so if you look at deep learning and machine learning, right? I mean, obviously there's the classic definition. I won't go into that. But uh, from our perspective, we look at you know data and how you can share the data. And so from an LF perspective, we have something called a CDLA license. So think of an Apache for data. How do you share data? Because it's a big Issue. Big deal. And we have solved that problem. Then you can say, hey, there's all these machine learning algorithms, you know, TensorFlow and, 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 and um, others, right? How can you use it and have plugins to this framework, right? Uh, then there's the infrastructure. Where do you run these machine learning? Like if you learn, run it on uh, edge, you can run predictive maintenance before a machine breaks down. If you run it in the core, you can do a lot more, right? Uh, so, so we've done that level of integration. So you're treating data like code. You can bring data to the table, and apply then, some licensing best practices like Apache. And then, yes, and then uh, integrate it with the machine learning, deep learning models and create platforms and frameworks, right? Whether it's for cloud yeah. services, yeah. whether it's for sharing across clouds, uh, elastic search, And Amazon does that internally. They vertically integrate SageMaker, for instance. That's exactly so right. Similar, and this is the open source version of it. Got it, oh, that's awesome. So, and how does someone get involved here? Obviously, develops going to love this. Deep Learning is, is the place to go under the Linux Foundation, similar to LF Edge and CNCF. So it's not just developers, it's also people who have data who might want to expose it in. Data scientists, data, databases, uh, uh, algorithmist, uh, machine yeah. learning, and obviously a yeah. whole bunch of stuff. A new kind of developer, data right. developer. And, and exactly, and a lot of uh, verticals like the security vertical, telecom vertical, enterprise verticals, finance, et Yeah, you know, I've always said, you and I talked about this before, and I always rant on theCUBE about this, I believe that there's going to be a data development environment where data is code, kind of like what DevOps It's the new with, currency, yeah. It's the new currency. Yeah. All right, so final um, area I want to chat with you before we get into the OSS China thing, networking. Yeah. Near and dear to your heart. Near and Networking's hot now, because if you bring IoT, Edge, AI, networking, you got to move things around. Move things around, right. <laughs> you so, still need networking. So we're in the second year of the LF networking um, journey and we are really excited at the progress that has happened, right? So uh, projects like ONAP, Open Daylight, Tungsten Fabric, OPNFV, uh, FDIO, right? I mean, these are now, I wouldn't say household names, but business enterprise names. And we've seen pretty much all the telecom providers, almost 70% of the subscribers covered, enabled by the, by the service providers now participating. Vendors are completely behind it. So we're moving into a phase, which is really the deployment phase. And uh, we are starting to see, uh, you know, not just POCs, but real deployments happen in some of the major carriers now. Very excited, you know, Dublin, ONAP's Dublin release is coming up. OPNFE just released the Hunter release. Uh, lots of exciting work in FIDO uh, to sort of connect yeah. um, multiple projects together. So we're looking at it. The big news there is the launch of what's called OBP, or uh, uh, you know, it's a compliance and verification program that cuts down the deployment time of a VNF by half. You know, it's interesting, uh, Stu and I always talk about this, Stu Miniman and I talk about this, uh, Cube co-host with me, about networking. You know, virtualization came out, I was like, oh, networking's going to change. Actually, it helped networking. It helped networking. Now you're seeing programmable networks come out. You see and Cisco doing a lot of things, Juniper as well. And you got containers and Kubernetes right around the corner. So again, this is not going to change the need. It's going to uh, the it's cha just not change the, the desire and need of networking. It's going to change what networking is. 
How do you describe that to people? Someone says, hey, Arpit, tell me what's going on with networking. You know, virtualization, we got through that wave. Now I got the container, Kubernetes, service mesh wave. How does networking change? Yeah, so it's a four step process, right? The first step, as you rightly said, virtualization, right? Moved into VMs. Uh, then came disaggregation, which led, enabled by the technology SDN, as we all know, right? Uh, then came orchestration, right? Which was last year, and that was enabled by projects like ONAP and automation. So now all of the networks are automated, fully running, self-healing, you know, feedback, close control, all that stuff. And networks have to be automated before 5G and IoT and all of these things hit because you're not no, no longer talking about phones, you're talking about things that get connected, right? Uh, so, so that's where we are today. And that journey continues for another two years um, uh, and beyond, right? But very heavy focus on deployment. Um, and while that's happening, we're looking at uh, you know the hybrid version of you know VMs and containers running in the yeah. network. How do you make that happen? Uh, how do you you know how do you translate one from the other? So you know VNFs, CNFs, everything going yeah. at the same time. You know what's exciting is with the software abstractions emerging, the hard problems are starting to emerge because as it gets more complicated, end by end problems, as you said, there you got. You, there's a lot of new costs and complexities. For instance, the big conversation at the edge is, you don't want to move data around. No. So you want no. to move compute to the edge, You can. it's yeah. still a networking problem, you still got edge. So edge, AI, deep learning, networking, all They're tied together. They're all tied together, right? And this is where uh, Linux Foundation, by developing these projects in umbrellas, but then allowing uh, working groups to collaborate between these projects, uh, is a very simple governance mechanism we use. So for example, we have edge working groups in Kubernetes that work with LF Edge. We have Hyperledger signaling, SIGs that work for telecom, so LFN and Hyperledger, right? Then we have automotive grade Linux that have connected cars working on the edge. Massive collaboration, but that's how it yeah, is. Yeah, you connect the dots, but you don't kind of force any kind of semantic or no. you know, syntax into what people can do. Each build. project is autonomous yeah. and independent, but related. Yeah, it's smart, you guys have a good view, I'm a big fan of what you guys do. Okay, let's talk about the uh, uh, Open Source Summit and KubeCon happening in China, week of the 24th of June. Correct. What's going on there, there's a lot of stuff going on beyond, beyond cloud native and Linux. What are some of the hot uh, areas in China that you guys are going to be talking about? I know you're going over. Yeah, so you know we're really excited to be there. Um, and this is again, life beyond Linux and cloud native. Uh, there's a whole dimension of projects there. Uh, you know, everything from the edge uh, and you know, the excitement of IoT, cloud edge. Uh, you know, we have uh, keynotes from you know, Tencent and uh, you know, VMware and all the Chinese, China Mobile and others that are all focusing on you know, the explosive growth of open source in China, right? Yeah, and they have a lot of use cases. They've been very aggressive on mobility. And very data. aggressive on mobility data, right? And they have been a big contributor to open source, right? Yeah. So, so all of that is going to happen there. Uh, a lot of tracks on AI uh, and deep learning, as a lot more algorithms come out of you know the Tencent and the Baidu's and the Alibabas of the world. Uh, so we have uh, tracks there. Uh, we have huge tracks on networking because you know 5G and implementation of uh, ONAP and network automation is all all part of the umbrella. So uh, we're looking at a cross-section of projects in uh, Open Source Summit and uh, KubeCon, right, all, all integrated in, in, in Shanghai. And a lot of use cases are developing, certainly on the edge in China. Correct. A lot and, of cross-pollination, cross a lot of pollination. fragmentation has been addressed in China, so they've yeah. kind of solved some of those problems. Yeah, and I think the good news is, uh, as a global community, which is open source, uh, whether it's uh, Europe, Asia, China, India, Japan, uh, the developers are coming together very nicely through a common governance which crosses boundaries yep. and building on use cases that are relevant to their community. And what's great about what you guys have done with Linux Foundation is that you're not taking positions on geographies because let the clouds do that because clouds have Clouds have Clouds, geographies, yeah, have Edge regions. may have geography, they have regions. The software, software. Software, software, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Arvid, thanks for coming in. Great insight, love talking about networking, uh, the deep learning, congratulations, and obviously the IoT Edge is hot. And, thank you very much, excited. Good trip to China, thanks thank for coming you, in. Thank you, thank you. I'm John Furrier here for CUBE Conversation with the Linux Foundation, uh, big event in China, OS, uh, Open Source Summit and KubeCon in uh, Shanghai, week of January 20, uh, June 24th. 
It's a Cube Conversation. Thanks for watching.